I do not believe right now that there is functioning law in the United States. We have roving bands smashing up department stores and stealing everything. You have people defecating all over the streets in California. The Westfield Mall has abandoned, uh, the company abandoned their lease. And some of the, two of the biggest hotels abandoned their, uh, I'm not sorry, their, not their lease, their, their, uh, their debts. They, they uh, what is it? I, for, I forgot what it's specifically called, but they um, surrendered. They basically told the lender, you know what? It's yours. We're out. Collateral is all yours. We'll lose the money we have on this. We are seeing just insane levels of crime, corruption. You got the trials in New York. You've got the Georgia trial. Fannie Willis. I mean, this is insane what's happening in Georgia. Can we just break this down? They go after Trump and his lawyers. And now the whole case is, is, is at risk of being thrown out because the prosecutors bang another prosecutor she hired. And it's, it's thrown the whole thing into, into a conflict of interest because they are literally corrupt. Now you've got to think it's Wisconsin, right? That filed their, their AG filed charges against Trump's lawyers again. Yes. The level of corruption yeah. and extrajudicial attacks that are happening. And I don't understand why people tolerate it. Like, I, I don't understand why Alex Jones or, or Donald Trump are just going like, well, I guess. I'm like, I don't, I don't know what you do, and I don't have answers, but if like a clown showed up to my doorstep demanding I hand over all of my bananas, I'm going to say, get off my property. It's psychotic to assume that we know what Georgia's doing is not within the confines of the law. We know what New York did was not within the confines of the law. Fact. We just have rogue police officers pointing guns at people and threatening them. Like, those cops in New York that are facilitating that trial against Trump that facilitated it, those they should all be in prison. And ugh, heaven forbid I ever get any kind of political power, because the first thing I'm doing as president or governor or whatever it might be is those all those cops are the first first to go to prison for the rest of their lives. You are not acting within the law. You have no authority under the law just because a guy claims He's ordered you to do it, does not give you the authority to do it, and you have broken the law. But unfortunately, Donald Trump goes along with it. Well, my, my, real quick, my argument for Trump was that he should have told Georgia, he should have told New York, you get a legitimate claim to Florida, hand it to Ron DeSantis, put it on his desk, and I will talk to him about whether this is an actual legal proceeding or not. I'm really glad you brought that up because I've been banging on, uh, and folks who follow me have seen me tweet this every every week every month for the past like you know year year and a half now which is that we effectively need a kind of sanctuary state for you know for politically heterodox folks and in particular something that i i published about last week which i think if there are any state assembly members listening right now i'm speaking directly to you what you can do right now in your state assembly if you are a state legislator in florida in texas in tennessee in arkansas pick your state Amend your malicious prosecution law. Every state has a malicious prosecution law that allows a civil action against a prosecutor who brought the suit, not in the interest of justice, but for a political reason or a malicious reason, and simply broaden that law to apply it to out-of-state prosecutors who, who target an in-state citizen. So, for example, if you are a citizen of the state of Florida, you simply say, that there is an in-state nexus to the state of Florida when a Georgia prosecutor or a New York prosecutor, now you, you probably be barred legally from doing this with federal because it's a state, but allow you to bring an in-state action against Alvin Bragg, against Fannie Willis for the malicious prosecution of an in-state person. This is effectively what, this, what, they, what Florida and Texas have done with their social media laws that allow now a civil course of action for certain censorship activities under, now, those laws have, are sort of being chewed up in the, in the appeals process currently, but you can do the same thing for malicious prosecution and allow Donald Trump to then sue Alvin Bragg and Fannie Willis in front of a Florida jury, and then we'll see if the same outcome happens. I agree. I, I guess the way I, you'd see it is they file the paperwork. They say to Donald Trump, he says, don't, I don't care. You talk to law enforcement in Florida. The moment they say, You're, you, this is legit, we say, okay. Then with the malicious prosecution laws, under the law in Florida, Trump files and says, this is an illegitimate case. Ron DeSantis and the state police then say, we cannot go anywhere near Trump. And this is a dispute between states that has to go to the federal courts. What this would allow is a parallel trial every time this happens. As New York is doing this trial to New York, well, guess what? Now New York's on trial in Florida. 
under, under a concurrent malicious prosecution case. And that, first of all, makes these things very expensive for the state to litigate. It, it has liability for these New York offices. It basically makes you a porcupine. So if you want to reach out of state for it, well, there goes the money for the New York prosecutors, who don't make very much, by the way. You know, this, this now makes the city of New York or, the, or the, the state of New York have to think about its own budget before it goes after an out-of-state person in, in, the prosecutor, uh, in a prosecutorial way. And then it allows this concurrent ongoing trial for all this evidence to come out in the Florida trial about how rigged the ongoing New York one is. So level design operator in chat said, plea, uh, uh, asked, uh, uh, that's not the chat I'm looking for, but they, it was level design operator asking what laws specifically were broken. So the first thing we have is, and uh, I don't know the degree to which it's criminal. So this is a level design operator says, what laws have they specifically broken in that so-called lawfare endeavor? So this is clearly malicious prosecution in a variety of ways. We have multiple cases that are malicious prosecution. And I think any reasonable human being, were it not for the culture one, this country in, in a hyper polarized state could conclude this. In New York, they changed the law to allow people to sue another person for sexual assault claims after the statute of limitations, but only for one year, only this one small window, Trump instantly sued on a 30 year old claim that can't be corroborated in any way. Yet somehow a jury uh, still says yes to anybody who followed that case and went through it knows the story makes no sense. It's even been challenged by people on CNN and MSNBC as being weird and making little sense. Then you have the criminal fraud trial against Trump's organization, which never committed fraud. They claimed that because Trump's filings for loans were incorrect, that's fraud, despite the fact that each and every one of those filings to the banks had a disclaimer that the information may be incorrect and it requires the due diligence of the lender. The lenders, like Deutsche Bank, said, we recognize that. We did our due diligence. We then told Trump his numbers were wrong. We agreed to give him a lesser amount towards the loan. Trump agreed we all made money from doing this. If we could, we'd do business with him again. Still, Trump found guilty of fraud. Kevin O'Leary, a, real a major real estate mogul, said this is absolutely insane. No one in New York is safe if this is what they're doing. Then you get the latest hush money trial. There's literally no direct evidence that Donald Trump did anything with Stormy Daniels other than he paid Cohen, who has lied about everything. Cohen admitted to committing grand larceny in stealing. Pro they say at bare minimum, 60,000. But under the defense's premise that Donald Trump had no idea that Cohen took out a loan on his own home to pay off Stormy Daniels of his own volition, he didn't know that was happening. That means Cohen stole $250,000, yet they still criminally charge Trump for doing this. Now, anyone who's run a business knows it makes no sense criminally to go after the CEO for what underlings have done that he's not even signing off on. You're the CEO of a company. A mid-level manager says, we're going to pay this lawyer off. Then another manager says, or your, C your CFO says, pay them off. And Trump's just like, sure, I'll sign the check. I don't know, whatever. It's a legal fee. Then they come back and say, you're criminally responsible for what those guys did. None of it makes any sense. But more importantly, let's go to the malicious prosecution. Alvin Bragg campaigns. I'm going to get Trump. I believe uh, uh, Letitia, uh, Letitia James as well. You have in the hush money case, it is a misdemeanor charge whose statute of limitations expired years ago, falsifying business records. You're not bringing back up eight years later, seven years later. They claim he was trying to influence an election, but the crime happened after he already won it. So what did they do? They said, OK, but if he falsified business records in furtherance of a secondary crime, manipulating the election, then we can upgrade it to a felony. Thirty four, in fact, for each time he signed a check. What was that underlying crime? None of us know, because the judge said the jury doesn't have to unanimously agree on any underlying crimes, just that they think something did occur and then Trump is guilty. Now, here's where it gets great. Here's the best part. I, I could be wrong about this, but I would assume that at the very least to be a reasonable person, there, is a, there are very rare circumstances in the United States where a prosecutor goes to a felony suspect and says, if you flip on this misdemeanor, we're going to let you off. You got a guy who admitted on the stand to committing grand larceny, stealing tens of thousands of dollars, openly admitted it. And they're like, no charges. But if you help us get this guy who falsified a business record, none of it makes sense. And it is all patently obvious, malicious prosecution. Now, as to the police officers who facilitate all of this, I make no distinction and no excuses for anyone just doing their job. 
If you are the officer who is kidnapping someone at gunpoint under a perceived authority that does not exist, heaven help you if I'm ever in charge of law enforcement in this country. If I was the president, the FBI would bet each and every one of their doors and they'd be like, you're all going to prison. I am. I am. I, you, people say, oh, that's so dictatorial. What? That you don't allow cops to. I don't know. How about CBP trafficking children on the border, which they're doing and we know they're doing. It is dictatorial to stop human trafficking, to stop corrupt cops just doing their jobs. That's the bare minimum of what legal accountability is supposed to be in this country. Well, that's where we're currently at. So how are you guys doing? That's an amazing rant. And, and again, to get back to this state legislators watching, anybody who knows a state legislator watching, the beauty of this strategy is simply expanding your malicious prosecutor law, malicious prosecution law in your state is Tim's rant right there is presented to a jury and the jury simply decides on the basis of a preponderance of evidence standard because this is a civil tort. So all you need is a 51 percent likelihood in the minds of the jury that everything Tim just laid out there what it, renders it malicious. I wonder what it is. You know, we're in this we're at this point where if New York accuses someone of a crime, Florida just says, well, OK, complies. No question, nothing. It seems kind of strange to me. Yeah, you know, I'm a resident of West Virginia. Am I supposed to assume that if Nebraska accuses me of a crime, that my own police will come and arrest me without evidence because of another state claims to have an indictment? I think that's bunk. I think we need to move forward with state protection for its residents, or perhaps it, it does exist, and I just don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer. The issue is, is I would be concerned, and I, I don't know the specific answer on this on this either. I would be concerned with that that because it's a it's a dispute between states, it would then make it a federal issue, and then federal marshals could come in and supersede the state, which is why the sort of malicious prosecution law strategy sort of. Uh, gets around that through all the costs imposed on the prosecutors and on and on the DA's office and on and on the state budget because even if if they sort of seize the guy so to speak they're paying they could be paying and again un, uncapped damages punitive damages on uh, if, if you want to throw it in treble damages uh, so that you're effectively bankrupting you know the the DA's office for going after it. And again, if, especially it, you know, a civil trial tends to take less time. I, I could see it having a huge deterrent effect, even if you could not get around the fact that the police, or the you know, federal marshals, would technically be able to take the person into custody. You know, to, to Rikers, you're at least uh, doing that economic devastation in kind, which is currently their strategy uh, to try to take out Trump. Because even in, in everything you just laid out, five hundred million dollars. For Trump on, uh, as you mentioned, on, on the on the on the uh, Mar-a-Lago valuation case, a hundred million dollars on, on the defamation case. Uh, the they, I, they claimed Mar-a-Lago was worth eighteen million dollars. The toilet seats worth eighteen million dollars. Anybody who has driven past Mar-a-Lago knows it's worth more than eighteen million dollars. Not a question. They are clearly lying. And and I, I again, Trump should put it on Ron DeSantis's desk. And the great thing though about that too is. That selective prosecution, because everything you just said, you know, during your, you know, Academy Award speech on all the ways they they, you know, dicked over Trump there is they had the exact same fact pattern with the Hillary Clinton FEC violation, yep. but they didn't do it. This selective prosecution is malicious. So you I blame that, the cops. So but having a legal hook to that in state allows you to highlight that selective prosecution instead of just whining in the press. Oh, these people are hypocrites. Now you get to hit him back in the piggy bank, which is where it really hurts. In this in this issue, I will say Donald Trump volunteered himself to New York, went along with this. I don't believe he was ever t grabbed by police and forced to do anything. He's not even been uh, uh, held in jail or anything yet. Should that be the case that he is given ho house arrest or anything, then we're then we're talking some uh, uh, some very serious crimes, in my opinion, illegitimate authority. I do not respect the idea that cops just get to dictate something for no reason. Not reality. And I, I, I reject it outright. Thanks for checking out this clip from Timcast IRL. Make sure to watch the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Subscribe to this channel and we will see you all there.